And a very good afternoon to you. I am Jeff Kulikowski. We interrupt regularly scheduled programming for a special report as a press conference is about to start with the Syracuse Police Department along with the Onondaga County DA and Mayor Ben Walsh. Let's go to that right now. Joe Cecil from Syracuse Police. Missing person investigation of five-year-old Nefertiti Harris, who had not been seen by the extended family members in uh, several months. The same day around 5 p.m., uh, we suspected we were dealing with something much more nefarious than a missing child. So we brought in our homicide team, which is our A-team, as all of you know, to begin working on this investigation. We also contacted Mr. Fitzpatrick, who responded in person and assisted us with this investigation. Numerous people were interviewed, search warrants were executed, and neighborhoods were canvassed. And yes yesterday, at the direction of the victim's mother, the suspect, we began searching a large wooded area off of Salt Springs Road. We received assistance from multiple agencies in the search. And although our investigation was hampered yesterday by the layer of snow that had fallen the day before, we resumed our efforts today. And at approximately 11 p.m. or 11 a.m., we discovered what we, who, what we believe to be the remains of Nefertiti Harris in that wooded area. Although we worked toward this outcome uh, in hope that it provides the family with some solace, it is still a very sobering conclusion to the sad and tragic event. You know, I want to say this too, um, you know, just when we see, think we've seen everything, something like this comes along and just punches us in the gut, punches everyone in this community in the gut, you know, and the thought that continues to haunt me on this one, after 40 years of being on this job, is that this little girl likely went to her grave thinking she was the problem, that it was her fault, that she deserved this, that she was a bad child and this is what happens to bad children, that this is how it's supposed to be. Can you imagine that being a child's last thought? So I just want to say this. This is not how it's supposed to be. This was not your fault. You did not deserve this. You should be in kindergarten right now, drawing pictures and playing with crayons and making friends and laughing. And that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, finally, I just want to say, I'd like to offer my condolences to Nefertiti's siblings uh, and extended family, also countless members of the community who, who sent us uh, requests on social media and also made phone calls at offering their assistance in the search. And at the time, it just wasn't practical, but we still appreciate all the people who called and sent requests through social media to help us out with the search. Uh, it has affected the entire community. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Sad news indeed. Let me just tell you where we are and uh, what the immediate future will bring. Uh, Ms. Latasha Mott, as you know, is currently incarcerated, unable to make bail on a charge of manslaughter in the first degree. That's a class B felony punishable by up to 25 years in state prison. Medical examiner, as we speak here today, is uh, in the process of carefully retrieving Nephi's remains uh, from her grave. Uh, it has to be done meticulously so as not to cause any injury to the body, so post-mortem and anti-mortem injuries are not confused. She, uh, Dr. Rivercomb, will address uh, the remains of Nephi uh, sometime probably tomorrow, and she will then opine as to the cause and manner of death. Case is being handled by Chief Assistant DA Rob Moran, who is here with us uh, this afternoon. If the cause of death is uh, consistent with the defendant's story, then we'll evaluate whether or not to upgrade the charges. If the cause of death is inconsistent with uh, the defendant's story, and it appears to have been uh, a more intentional type homicide, then obviously the charges will be upgraded. At the present time, although I won't name anybody, we do not believe that the defendant disposed of the body by herself. We are, and I say we, the Syracuse Police Department, is actively investigating other, uh, at least one other individual's role, and perhaps more, in disposing of this uh, precious little girl's body. It appears that she has uh, been up there for several months, uh, so you can imagine what kind of condition her remains will be in. I know many of you have a lot of questions. Who did what, when, where, and why? Those are the same questions that I have and that Mr. Moran has, that the mayor has, and the chief has. I assure you, I assure you that we will answer those questions in due time. I can't answer them for you today. I don't know what school people were thinking. I know that according to a published report uh, from this afternoon, some school officials were told that the child was in Georgia. 
Was there any effort made to verify that? I don't know. But I will know when I next speak to you again uh, regarding this case. So I know there's a, a need to know, uh, there's a right to know, and uh, we want to make sure that we do a root cause analysis of this death, Ashton's death, and any other death of any child in this county so that they never happen again. Mayor. Uh, thanks, District Attorney. I just first want to start by offering my condolences to, uh, to Nephi's family, uh, her loved ones. <clears throat> Uh, want to acknowledge and appreciate uh, our police officers. Uh, we had SPD officers along with our partners in the district attorney's office, medical examiner's office that were uh, out for many hours uh, looking for something that uh, no one ever wants to find, which is the body of uh, the dead body of a five-year-old girl. Uh, and while I'm certainly grateful that uh, it appears that we found her, um, that brings little solace to anyone. Um, but I do want to recognize the excellent police work that took place to, to get us to this point uh, and, and that will certainly be required to get us where we need to be to hold everyone accountable. And, and that is uh, objective number one. You know, in this line of work, unfortunately, we come across instances that are really hard to put into words. And, 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 uh, and there's been, it feels like, a lot of them lately. And uh, this one, in many ways, uh, has been harder than any to, to come up with the right words. And I think part of it is because when you try to put yourself in a place to make sense of a mother killing her five-year-old daughter, it brings you to a dark place that you don't ever want to be. And you hope you are never, uh, you never end up there. Um, you know, so I have struggled with, with, with how to talk about it. Um, you know, I was talking with someone today who said quite simply, um, a child is a gift. And I know we're not supposed to talk in, in, in religious terms uh, in, in this line of work, but um, th that, that about says it all. Children are a gift from God. And anyone uh, that knowingly, intentionally takes that gift away uh, is evil. And, and that's what we're dealing with here. And there is no justifying it. Um, so rather than spend time trying to justify it, uh, we need to spend our time holding um, people accountable uh, and making sure that we do everything in our power uh, to make sure that it never happens again. Um, again, this has impacted everyone in the community, uh, and uh, my thoughts and prayers are, are with this community during this incredibly difficult time. Um, and with that, uh, we'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you. Chief Cecil, um is there a relationship between this location where the remains were found and, and the person who allegedly put them there? Why this field? Why this old baseball field behind this apartment off Salt Springs Road? Yeah, so that's one of the things we're going to continue to investigate. It's one of the things we probably don't want to necessarily let out to the public because it'll be part of uh, D.A. Fitzpatrick's uh, um, prosecution. But she suggested that's where to look, the mother. Suggested uh, that we look there? Correct. What, um, was, was it intended to be a formal burial, or was this a ditching of remains, for lack of a better term, term hiding, hiding the remains? Or proper, proper is not the right word either, but a burial of some sort. Yeah, once again, I'm going to ask the DA to answer that if he wants. Well, I, wanna... you know, I was at the uh, scene earlier today, and uh, you know, it, it, it certainly wasn't anything consistent with a religious service or a formal burial. It was consistent with someone attempting to conceal the dastardly act. What can you all say about the extent of this little girl's injuries? You said that the mother um, beat her, and she, according to court documents, that, that she was beaten in a shower. What can you say about what led up to her death? Well, what we charged her with, Megan, is consistent with what she said, okay? Obviously, Dr. Rivercombe is going to give us a tremendous insight on that sometime tomorrow, and uh, either the chief or I uh, the mayor or all three of us will let you know what she has to say. Uh, three months in the ground, it's, you know, it's Onondaga County, so it's probably some preservation. You know, I've seen bodies uh, in the middle of summer deteriorated to the point where you can't tell what the person died of. All you have is a skeleton. But uh, Dr. Rivercombe is going to be looking for any sign of external injuries, any gunshots, any stabbing, any uh, stab wounds on the, uh, consistent with a knife on the bones, uh, any type of strangulation. Uh, if the eyes are still preserved, the tongue, we can tell whether the child was strangled. Uh, if there is sufficient tissue remaining to determine whether or not uh, the child was in fact 
bruise consistent with the defendant's story. But as I said, we'll know a lot more, a lot more tomorrow. Could you differentiate why it's a homicide right now versus what you'd need specifically for it to be an elevated charge? Well, to, to, to have a homicide, you need a corpus delecti, which we are about, and we are in the process of recovering. And you need a statement from a defendant that has to be corroborated. The collection of the body corroborates the defendant's statement, so we have sufficient probable cause to charge her with manslaughter. As I say, that uh, very, very possible that those charges will be upgraded. What leads you all to believe that there is another person involved? Uh, well, uh, let, let, let me just say that we have uh, some evidence. But first of all, you know, the irony, uh, and the chief was emotional as, as he usually is because he's a caring human being. Some of, the, you know, some of the irony here is that there are a group of Syracuse police officers, some of whom are combat veterans, who have tears in their eyes uh, about two miles from here and treated this little girl in death better than she was ever treated uh, in life. So um, my belief that there's another person involved is based on information I got from the Syracuse Police Department that I'm not going to disclose at this time, not, not in any way to, to hide anything, but just because to protect the integrity of the investigation. And my suggestion to that individual, if he's listening to my voice, is, you know, first in, first out. Now is the time to come forward and cooperate, because up to this point, uh, he's been uh, completely uncooperative, which is astonishing to anybody with a soul. Um, but we'll see how he, uh, what decisions he makes in the next several hours. Do you believe that he is still in the service area? And yes. Did the mother implicate him? Say again. I'm sorry. Did the mother implicate him? Uh, the mother made some statements about him, so if his motivation is to protect her, he ought to rethink that. Him being her boyfriend? Sorry? Him being her boyfriend? Oh, I mean, look, uh, yeah, her boyfriend. I've, I've already mentioned to the media publicly that he's been unco uncooperative, and he has the full panoply of rights that uh, Nephi never had. Uh, but be that as it may, where he's got a lawyer, uh, the lawyer has been cooperative with my office, but that doesn't necessarily mean his client has been cooperative. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how that plays out in the next couple of hours. Are there any other identifying things on the remains to make it very, very clear that this was a defeat? Yeah, I think, it, I, I, I think as the chief emphasized, we've, we've made an assumption here based on the physical observations of the officers at the scene. Uh, it would be, you know, a one in a trillion chance that it's not her, that it's some other young woman. It, it, when, when we, the only reason we're there is because that's where the defendant told us to look. But there's, uh, there's identifiable uh, clothing and I believe bedding uh, attached to the body that I'm sure a relative will be able to identify. Can you and the chief go into the timeline a little bit more detail as to what specifically served police involvement? Our understanding it was effectively two women that were close to the FRT that had been lied to by the mother of that lawyer. Yeah, so it's my understanding, and maybe I, I don't think I'll get this wrong, but it's my understanding uh, it was a conversation between um, a woman who was uh, at, uh, in the past a foster mother for this child. Uh, and the grandmother of the child, the biological grandmother of the child, talking back and forth about, um, I thought you had a nephew, well, I thought you had nephew, and then they realized that neither one of them, and then made other phone calls to other family members that no one had seen Nefertiti for uh, upwards of three months. Since, hadn't seen her in, uh, since January, early January. Were you guys notified about uh, Nefertiti's um, absence from school? Not that I'm aware of. Well, and, and that's a question that either you or the, I hope the district attorney will touch upon, or the mayor as the, as the uh, mayor of Syracuse. We know from the school district that paperwork was filed to transfer after death never tidy from one school to another, after death. That means at her new school, she didn't show up a single day. It sounds like the school district notified family members. But can we speak to the process? How can a girl be missing from school for that long and eyes not be put on her by someone, whether it be law enforcement, child protective services. What is the problem with the system for that to happen? Well, you know, I'll answer it, but I think the mayor and the district attorney probably can answer more. But um, 
You know, I don't know the inner workings of the school. I don't know when she was registered. You just mentioned that, Andrew, um, whether they're required to notify us if, if uh, she doesn't show up for school. Uh, I know there's all kinds of FERPA laws and FERPA rules and different acronyms that don't allow them to sometimes, um, you know, share information with us. So I, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know if either of you would... would um... So I, I don't either. I spoke with the superintendent today. You know, he explained that, uh, again, what we know, that the, that the child was transferred um, from McKinley Brighton to Meacham uh, after, uh, after her death, um, which obviously shows intentionality on, on the part of her mother. Um, superintendent indicated that they did, you know, that, uh, that they did call home and, um, and not just one time that, you know, that mother had explained that uh, she had moved, but uh, I think because of a lack of any subsequent documentation, they did continue to reach out. But I don't have any more details than that. How often, at which point, you know, does the protocol suggest it gets elevated? I, I don't have those answers. I know, I know the school district is uh, is looking at all of that, um, and I think it's important that we we know we get those answers. I, you know, I just want to offer some <clears throat> some context. Um, you know, the, in the city of Syracuse, 25 percent of our population, a quarter of our population moves at least one time every year. Think about that for a minute. Think about the disruption in every aspect of their lives, first and foremost. But then think about the, the systems and the institutions that have to support the, uh, those individuals. Um, when we talk about the level of poverty in the city, when we talk about the level of addiction in this community, the level of mental health issues, this is how it manifests itself. I think oftentimes people lose sight of, of, of how that, what that actually means uh, in people's lives. It's chaos. And uh, it's critically important that the institutions and the individuals that are entrusted with the care of, uh, of our community, regardless of their circumstances, that they do it right, uh, regardless of circumstances. Um, but, but, the, the, but when you factor in the amount of uh, of movement, the amount uh, that our kids are moving from different neighborhoods to different houses, sometimes they're not housed, uh, it's incredibly challenging. And so I think that while we certainly uh, need to understand uh, the district's process, we need to understand uh, the circumstances that, uh, and the environment that they're operating in, which is often uh, incredibly chaotic. And while that's certainly relevant for, uh, for looking at, 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 at the district, I think it's most relevant for looking uh, at this poor little girl and the chaos that she lived in on a daily basis. Mayor, you should be celebrating the reduction of gun violence in the city, which has brought you to that podium many times uh, with similar distraught in your voice. Yeah. That's something to celebrate, but it's hard to celebrate, you've said this before, when there's continued death in other ways. Yeah, we, now have, we now have parents right. accused of killing their children right. back to back. Yeah, well, it, you know, it, it just goes to show, again, that if you were to survey uh, a resident of this community uh, or, or, or offer them the, the fact that you just did, that not only violence is down, we haven't one, had one gun-related homicide in the city in 2024. People would say, no, that's no way, that can't be, with the amount of bad news that, that we get on a daily basis. But to your point, um, it, that, that chaos, that violence, um, and, and in some cases that evil manifests itself in many different ways. And, uh, and clearly, uh, the most recent examples uh, have been in horrific ways uh, impacting uh, our most vulnerable population. died thinking that she was a bad person, that this was how it should happen, that um, how, how do you, that's not something we'd heard before. How do you know that? Or? I don't know it at all, Marty. It's just something that, that haunts me. You know, when I see these children, when these type of things happen, in particular this one, um, and knowing some of the details that perhaps you folks don't know yet, uh, it just haunts me thinking that this child, her last thought when she was being beaten to death by her mom was that um, it was her fault uh, that she was somehow a bad child and, and going to the grave with that thought and you know Hopefully wherever she's now someone's telling her that's that's not the case that she had nothing to do with this that she was just a five-year-old child um, That should be in should be in school having fun and learning and coloring um, It just it's something that haunts me and uh, again these these things even after all these years I've been on you know they're a punch in the gut when we have them. How are your officers? 
I think they're doing good. I mean, we have a very good program set up with peer support and all kinds of health and wellness and uh, great people that will reach out to them. Primarily the ones that were the most most involved in this, uh, this event because many of them have children of that age and uh, we have to make sure that they're okay. Um, so we're, we're going to be watching out for them. Can you please describe um, some of the logistics? I know your officers worked very hard. How many people were there? How long were they searching? And um, what? Uh, how large was the area that was searched? So the area start was large, which, but the, uh, the suspect did point out a fairly focused area. The area itself is huge. It's a field. It's got trees, forest. But she pointed out a specific area. Um, and once the snow uh, melted, um, we used canine officers. We had state police there. We had a drone up, as you probably saw. Um, multiple different agencies helped us out to focus in on that area. Uh, the snow was really the biggest hindering hindrance. Once it melted away, uh, we very quickly, 11 o'clock this morning, were able to find the site that the mother pointed out. How did you, like, was, it, um, was the earth, like, moved or not, not to give away the farm, but can you just describe that a little bit? I can describe that the earth was moved and that there were some, some brush there and things like that. I don't want to go too much into detail, but it was clearly a site that had been, um, it didn't resemble the other sites around it, um, meaning that it had been tampered within a few months. Got time for one more. Are we in regards to this burial, would you be able to say how long after the death she was actually put in the ground? Is, is there evidence to whether or not it happened the same day that she died, or if there were, how much time elapsed between when the death and that well, it'll be part of the uh, investigation, Connor. I mean, certainly we'll have something to do with the medical examiner's office um, and something to do with um, some of the other evidence that we have with regards to this, but not something I want to mention, mention here. Is there a chance it was put elsewhere for the in, the, in between, moved to one location, then moved to another? Uh, there's a chance. Mm -hmm. Mayor Walsh, one last question for you. you. You talk about this bigger picture of this issue here. We have had children that have fentanyl overdoses. We've had this terrible case. What is not working? What more do you need in a city where we have such extreme poverty in these circumstances to prevent this from happening again? We talk about this every time. This can't happen again. It can't happen again. And now it has. Megan, I think if anybody had the answer to that, we would have uh, we would have figured it out by now. Again, I talk about uh, the the challenges that face our society um, have been, you know, disproportionately concentrated in our cities. So the so oftentimes the the worst of us um, is uh, is presented to us uh, on a consistent basis in ways that you know other communities don't see. Um, but make no mistake, the problems that we're talking about: substance use, uh, mental health. Poverty. These are societal issues. These are issues that we as a society need to fix. Um, there isn't one institution or one level of government that's going to fix them. Uh, and I think if nothing else, uh, um, our constituents should uh, take some solace in the fact that um, you have different levels of government and different agencies represented here. I've spoken with the county executive about this. I've spoken with the superintendent uh, about this. Uh, we have advocated for different policies at the state and federal level. Uh, this is something that, again, it affects our entire society and we all need to work together to fix. But if it was an easy fix, if, it, if, if we knew what the, what the problem was, uh, we would have solved it long ago. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <clears throat> And you have been watching a press conference on the search for the body of five-year-old Nefertiti Harris, uh, an emotional one. You heard the police chief there saying this case haunts him, the mayor talking about how he struggled to talk about this because, quote, it brings you to a dark place you never want to be. That body of the five-year-old found around 11 this morning in a makeshift grave in a wooded area off Salt Springs Road, not far from H.W. Smith School. The medical examiner is on the scene right now. It is a meticulous process. The DA explained to retrieve that body and get it back. The mother, Latasha Mott, has been in jail. She has not been able to get out on bail. The DA says her charges may be elevated. The DA also mentioning a second person, Mott's boyfriend, who likely helped her dispose of the body but has not been cooperative with investigators. Of course, our coverage will continue on News Channel 9 beginning first at 4. That's about 18 minutes away, and you can check in anytime at localsyr.com. We return you to regularly scheduled programming. For stiff muscles and confusion, which can